Dateline, Washington. Time stops for no man, and attorneys at the White House have only three days remaining for a response to a civil complaint brought in the federal court in Washington to provide a response regarding their refusal to respond to a request for documents submitted under the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA, acknowledged as received on March 23, 2021, almost exactly two months to the day that the president had tasked the intelligence community to redouble its efforts to determine the origins of a novel coronavirus that has been attributed worldwide to more fatalities than the Holocaust in half the time. More problematic for the White House is the fact that the intelligence community had been tasked almost exactly one month after the deadline had told for response to the FOIA request, and limited to a false dichotomy in scenarios, i.e., a natural spillover or, in the alternative, an escape from a laboratory for a disease that had possessed the equivalent of the acceptance rate at Harvard University by secondary attack rate, but which, by the first anniversary of the pandemic declaration had claimed more American lives than both world wars, the conflict in Southeast Asia, and the terror attacks on 9-11 combined. And, at this hour, an archived record from a timeline, preserved in evidence by officials at the WHO, takes center stage. The timeline record pertains to the first three fateful days as an outbreak of just a total of 15 cases of a pneumonia of unknown origin had been identified by government officials in China, in a city with a population larger than the state of Virginia, connected to a venue the size of nine American football fields, with no fatalities, and about which, by January 10, 2020, when the first fatality had been reported, not even Chinese public health officials could validate was a disease being transmitted from person to person, at all. Why did the Chinese public health officials react with such panic? The response just appears to be disproportionate to the threat. Why did officials at the WHO similarly react, standing up the Incident Management Support Team, or IMST, described as a three-level organization, putting the organization on an emergency footing, even though not even one case appeared to even have the capability to cross a transnational border at that point, and for a disease about which, even by the end of February 2020, 1,800 teams of at least five epidemiologists, examining 19 times more cases than had yet been reported in the entire U.S. by mid-March 2020, had reached the clinical conclusion, it is not clear whether this correlates with the presence of an infectious disease. Why the world panic button response, is the question at this hour, as another request under the foyer is being transmitted to officials at the NIID to obtain copies of emails from the esteemed Dr. Anthony Fauci, who had served as that agency's director, and who had early been identified in the pandemic by reporters at Al Jazeera as America's most trusted voice in distinguishing fact from fiction. Virus particles, as any microbiologist, vaccinologist, or epidemiologist should know, are the most abundant biological particles on Earth, and yet, despite the broad range of potential, until the novel coronavirus had produced only a total of 219 threats to mankind from only 23 families, and yet, for unknown reasons, between the period 2003 and 2005, with the emergence of SARS in Hong Kong, a total of five of the current seven human coronavirus had suddenly and abruptly burst onto the world stage, all of which had found some relation to a bad coronavirus currently circulating in Yunnan, the location of a military-grade virology institute so secretive that it is never even discussed in the news reports. Should the White House fail to file a responsive pleading to the complaint filed in the federal court in March, the requester would be entitled to a default judgment, and the White House would then be compelled, under the law, to disclose whether certain standard metrics, i.e., infectious dose and or secondary attack rate for COVID-19 was classified information. Since March 23, 2021, the White House had asserted a presumptive claim of executive privilege, which is reserved for matters of national security. And in this litigation, now being attempted for the third time in two years, 
it is significant that these metrics could not be classified information unless the government had owned or controlled the biological agent that has been attributed to the deaths of over 1.3 million Americans. Moreover, these metrics could not be classified or owned by the government, by operation of law, unless the novel coronavirus had been cultivated or manipulated in a laboratory, a claim that Dr. Fauci has on previous occasions repeatedly denied. That matter is scheduled for a hearing on July 26 in the federal court in Washington. However, with the newest FOIA request, NIAID will have until August 8 to produce emails belonging to Dr. Fauci published between December 24, 2019 and January 2, 2020, on the assumption that Dr. Fauci would have been privy to any discussions between the WHO and Beijing before and or during the intriguing decisions that had been made by that foreign government and an NGO that had begun the longest respiratory tract infection pandemic in history and establishing a prima facie case of a transnational conspiracy to commit terror involving these entities and one who had been described as America's most trusted voice in distinguishing fact from fiction in the pandemic. That is the news for now in Washington, and we shall keep you posted on this developing story. This message was approved by Major Mike Webb. Honest.